Welcome back. Later in the programme, we'll be at the Isle of Wight Festival speaking to Damien Hurst about cows. But before that, we have a rare interview with another pillar of the British art scene. Internationally renowned photographer and maverick conceptual artist Pete Steroni often makes the headlines but rarely speaks publicly about his work. Formerly known for prints, he confesses to being the engineer of his own isolation. But earlier today, he gave Art & Soul exclusive access to his rapidly expanding folio and offered some astonishing opinions on recent successes and disappointments. In the series of candid interviews that follow, Peter unveils his latest project, explains how snooker as an art form is causing climatic damage, attacks his critics, and reveals his ambitious plans for the next 12 months. But before we meet him, let's take a look at the career of one of the most exciting, innovative, and challenging artists ever to emerge from Bracknell. The son of an Italian paparazzi photographer and an English art teacher, Pete Stroni was always destined to find a living in the creative arena. By his own admission, his early schooling produced unspectacular results, but by the time he attended Midhance Polytechnic, his creative folio was taking shape. Widely published in magazines and fine art books over two decades, Steroni has produced many narrative stories that demand subtle appreciation and visual perception of mood and timing. Considered a cultural archaeologist who merges the roles of collector, curator and tourist, through the rigorous, highly charged arrangement of commonplace objects and materials, Steroni has developed an articulate and eloquent vocabulary that is at once analytical and emotionally charged, formal and socially relevant. His broad body of genre-crossing work includes dreamlike imagery of seagulls in flight, a collection of modernist views of cutlery, and most famously, his childlike studies of grass and mowers, the beautifully naive collection Crop and Murder. Each project is representative of Steroni's interest in abstraction and negative space, and his dynamic compositions exude the energy and awe of timeless bodies. More recently, his daring lifescapes have been abstract and completely human, though consistently devoid of form and often substance. After being banned in China because his work was considered to include wrong spirits and inhuman portrayals, the incensed Steroni was motivated to take his work a stage further and the resultant self-abuse montage Skin Chain is still held by customs officials in Atlanta, who are keen to extradite him under the state legislation covering crimes against art. Away from canvas and print, Steroni's installation work has the ability to refocus our attention on the subtleties of inner angst. Although bold in its contrast and form, his dead wheelbarrow piece maintained an equal amount of tenderness, delicacy and self-reflection. By fusing modern creation with traditional photographic techniques, Steroni is regarded by the establishment as an enemy of progress. His maverick approach and reluctance to engage critics adds fuel to the fire. So the first question I asked him was about his most infamous project. The publicly funded exhibition, Muck. Yes, um, Muck was an interesting creature. Uh, half photographic, a third conceptual. It was like a wild creative animal, a beast. Um, a real a four-dimensional minotaur of a project. Where did the inspiration come from? In a very real sense, it came from the earth, from the ground. Too many artists are looking up for inspiration, so I just looked down and, and there it was, on the ground, on shoes, and on the very pavements that frame and constrict our cities. Um, it was about freedom and celebration, because dogs if given the choice, will crap everywhere. And then you see people carrying little bags around like trophies. And you wanted to capture that? Yes, uh, because dog's muck, any animal's crap, is organic. It's something that they create. Sometimes the creative act itself can be a painful process. And I think you can see from the imagery how much work some of the animals actually put into the creative moment. I wanted to capture that instant and connect with it, frame it, box it, bag it. Your critics say that the muck body of work not only glorified a bodily function, but it also raised important copyright issues that you were not the original creator of what the viewer was intended to experience. Let me correct you straight away. That project evolved. Yes, there were dogs, but it embraced cats, donkeys, a llama. And that's what annoys me about critics. They rarely use facts. And frankly, you're reminding me now of why I don't do interviews. 
I'd rather speak through the brush and the lens, have the media misinterpret me, but have a part of me stay private. Let us agree that the project was loosely dog supported. Um, but to address a specific point in an article by the Arts Minister um, back in April 2008, it was stated that the funding of arts in Britain had been put back 20 years by your exhibition. Interesting that they say 20 years, because if the truth be known, within Muck I was looking to challenge both the past and the future, and I really can't emphasise that enough. For an artist, scathing criticism, though an occupational hazard, must hurt. <laughs> if a man with a comb over and an ill-fitting suit doesn't like my work, well, I don't like his either, but I'm not shouting my mouth off. These people don't understand that Art Mountain has no summit. We can climb, but an arts minister or a critic cannot tell us where to stick the flag. But Pete, he would say he's speaking on behalf of taxpayers who fund the work. People don't have to pay tax. I don't think I do. They can just move to Switzerland if they want. But if they insist on paying tax, for me, they surrender the right to criticise what the money is used for. You mentioned Switzerland, despite a cool response to your work in the UK. You are hugely popular over there. Also Luxembourg, Norway and Denmark. Why do you think that is? Does art cross borders differently to other products? Yes, it does. Um, Estonia and Bosnia are also key markets where art is understood. We sell our exhibitions there very quickly uh, and also in Scandinavia. And, and over there, I don't have to justify myself or my work. And in Oslo, I'm, I'm treated like a rock star. Really? Do you get mobbed? Not quite. Norwegians are a proud and intelligent race and historically they've tended to express their emotions through forestry work, culture and the wholesale slaughter of whales. But I feel that on the streets now there is an underground feeling, a desire to mob that is gathering pace. There certainly seems to be an appetite for fresh contemporary art in Scandinavia at the moment. Artistically, Norway is on a knife edge. Finland as well, to a lesser extent. They are a pair of cultural tinderboxes at a crossroads, the same crossroads. And if my work just happens to be the catalyst that ignites change, then that wall could come down again. And if that spark catches, we could have an artistic Dresden on our hands. And that, for me, would be incredibly exciting.